Suppose that you have hundreds of students, each editing Wikipedia articles as part of a classroom assignment at the university, and that you have professors and other subject matter experts trying to review everything that the students do to maintain quality control and assure that they're meeting their educational objectives. There is a way to do this. Wikipedia is digitally native, and it's possible to track a group of students' edits. How do you do? My name is Lane Raspberry. I edit Wikipedia at the School of Data Science at the University of Virginia. Let's look at some Wikipedia editing tools. This is a Wikipedia article. You should be familiar with this. This is what we're talking about. It's in the field of dentistry. These students all edited medical or den dental articles. And we've got uh, the body of the article. At the bottom, we have citations. Very important for university students. They should be reading academic papers and scholarly articles where they get information and bring that wisdom and knowledge into Wikipedia. I'd like to point out the view history button at the top. You don't need to create an account. You don't need any special permissions to check this out. But every edit to every Wikipedia article is permanently and publicly archived. Anyone can click one version of the article at one point in time and another version of the article at another point in time. And if they click compare selected revisions, you can see all the changes. On the left side of the screen is the before version. On the right side of the screen is the after version. Anyone can check this. You can see exactly where any Wikipedia article originated, how it was developed, who did it, at what point in time, when, when did it ever say these things. But supposing you don't want to just check one Wikipedia article, you want to check many Wikipedia articles. Maybe you have hundreds of students and you want to monitor them all. There are training programs to get you oriented to this. This is in something called the Programs and Events Dashboard, native to Wikipedia. This is a, a monitoring uh, application inside Wikipedia. If you're the instructor, you take the learning and evaluation modules to learn how to use the Programs and Events Dashboard and organize a Wikipedia editing event at your school or at your library, <laughs> museum, what, what community center, whatever the case may be. And if you're the student, you can take the Wikipedia training modules. If you like, you can also just jump right into editing Wikipedia. But if you like, uh, for dentistry, there's a special mod module for editing medical topics. This is what applies to this case. And you can learn things in there like, what is Wikipedia's requirement for citing sources? Uh, what's a reliable source and what's not reliable? Uh, so just in short, if you want to learn how to do this, you can take the training. It's available. Supposing you take the training, you're ready to jump right into it. What are you going to see? There's something that, there's something called the dashboard. Here is the dashboard. And in this program that I'm uh, giving as an example, we have a Wikipedia collaboration of dental schools doing projects with Wiki Project Dentistry in Wikipedia. We see that we have 385 dental students participating in this program. They made almost 6,000 edits, editing over 400 Wikipedia articles. They added 600,000 words. A lot of those are words of citation, so that's not body of the article, but it's still a substantial amount of content. They cited 6,000 references. Many of these references are repeated, so they'll find one good article and cite it many times in the paper after, after many sentences. After the students had done these edits, these articles have been viewed 200 million times. This is a substantial public health educational intervention. This is a huge audience. This is why people come to Wikipedia, because it's so effective to delivering information uh, to the people who want it at the time that they want it, that is, the Wikipedia readers. It's possible to see what every student participating in the program is. They click to join this program. Here's their Wikipedia names. And we've got a list of them. You can click on these, these usernames and click on their editing history. It's all public. It's all permanent. You can see every student that ev every edit that every student did. If I click on articles here, I get another perspective of those same edits. Instead of sorted by student, now they're sorted by Wikipedia article that they edited. So I can see for any article how many words did students add, how many times did they cite a source, in this case, 53 citations added. Uh, typically after 50, 53 sentences, that's that's how that's going to look. And the article has been viewed 80,000 times since the students edited it. If I want to see specifically what the students did, I can check the history of that article. I've shown you how to access the history or within the dashboard. I can click show cumulative changes and I get the same same content in a slightly different view here in the dashboard. Again, the before version on the left, the after version on the right. The student has, has removed text, added text, rearranged text. You can see what citations they've added. It's all available here for anyone to have oversight over. 
with so many students, hundreds of students editing all these hundreds of articles, how can we manage this at scale? Well, you can have humans check this out. And of course, the wiki community has its own review process. And wiki community reviewers check this. Nothing happens without the oversight of the wiki community and their approval as well. There is no private editing space in Wikipedia. We all share one Wikipedia. But increasingly in Wikipedia, and I'm, I'm just going to briefly mention this, it's important, it's going to get more important as time goes on, but there's artificial intelligence that checks things in different ways. I'm going to describe a simple artificial intelligence check. Don't put too much weight on this, but I'd like you to know that this happens in the educational program, and it's one of the signals that people see. There's other signals as well, but this is one in the dashboard. Uh, these artificial intelligence programs, they assign numbers to very complicated things, and the numbers are not always meaningful. In this case, there's a number called uh, structural completeness. How complete does a given Wikipedia article appear to be to computer eyes as compared to other Wikipedia articles that the computer thinks are in the same category? Uh, before I, I show this to you, I'm just going to tell you the summary. Big number good, small number less good. And what you really want to see in these classes is it starts in a small number and gets to a big number. There's so many exceptions to this. It's an AI. It's not the smartest thing in the world, but it's very quick and it's very inexpensive to do this. Let's take a look at the structural completeness number. So we've got another view of the dashboard. This is something called ORS. Uh, that's the name of the, the Wikipedia artificial intelligence. It's very popular for this. Or is like mining rocks out of the ground, mining information out of articles. Uh, it produces this data visualization, a bit difficult to comprehend. It's This tool is actually made for checking a few articles, not checking almost 400. But I can open this up in a, a code-based editor and pull some pull some data out. And what we see here is dental restoration, the name of the article. It has a before score. It has an after score. And when the score is bigger, there's more impact. Again, I'm not saying put too much weight on the artificial intelligence, but what you can use this for is if you see a big change, then you know that the student or editor has done something exceptional. And if you're browsing a lot of topics and don't have time to check them all, all by hand, you can check it with this artificial intelligence tool. Thanks so much for hearing it out. Try Wikipedia in your classroom. It's a inexpensive, quick way that's fun for students that they will remember uh, to distribute information from the library through the students' minds into the public consciousness and media access through the very popular website, Wikipedia. Thanks.